Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash petty revenge. In today's episode. Don't want to let me study for finals? We'll all get up extra early to make up for it. Karen lady honks at elderly lady, so I block her path. Friend's little brother gets mailed. It's not a small animal. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Don't want to let me study for finals? We'll all get up extra early to make up for it. This takes place close to 20 years ago but still makes me chuckle. My freshman year of college, I lived in dorms with landline room phones that went in sequential order. This knowledge is what I used to exact my petty revenge. I was up late studying for spring finals. I didn't expect total silence but these neighbors were usually kinda loud slash inconsiderate on a good day. It was tolerable until it wasn't. My desk and bed were against my neighbor's wall. Obviously done with finals or at least studying, my neighbors had a party. I had ignored the loud music, laughing slash yelling and slamming doors from them until about 11 p.m. I had already tried earplugs, headphones with my own music, etc. But they were getting rowdy. As it was so late, I didn't feel comfortable going across the university campus to the library. I finally got fed up and went over to ask if they could keep it down a little as it was so late. The neighbors just stood there and while their friends snickered. I stared at them until I got some acknowledgement but no apology. I went back to my room and tried to get back to work. Of course, they continued to be inconsiderate assholes. I could even hear them making fun of me as they got louder. I decided I wouldn't get any more studying done but I wasn't going to get the RA involved as it was now midnight. It wasn't an emergency, just rude as hell. I put earplugs in and eventually fell asleep, planning my sweet revenge for 5 a.m. the next morning. Next morning, I got out of bed quietly and sat down at my desk, my left ear pressed against the wall. Of course, dead silence now. I was able to count down from my phone number to figure out their landline number. I used my track phone cell phone and started calling them. It rang as off campus so I didn't think they'd suspect me. Back then, cell phones weren't terribly common and who would waste those prepaid, precious minutes? I would hear one of them get out of bed and stumble over to the phone only to hang up as soon as they answered. I did this several times, waiting to call again until I heard them get back in bed. The last time they answered, the one girl whined, why are you doing this? Best minutes I ever spent. Karen lady honks at elderly lady, so I block her path. I was walking down the sidewalk past this Panera, and this elderly lady was getting out of the passenger seat of a car, and this total Karen honked at her. The stupid part is that she didn't even give her two seconds. Like, I can't even move that fast. So I stood in front of her car and blocked her path. Obviously, she got annoyed and started honking at me, but I just stood there unbothered. And then she tried to go around me, so I kept moving in front of her car. It was really funny because there was another car behind her, so she couldn't reverse. I left the scene when she got really angry lol. Friend's little brother gets mailed. Way back in the day, circa 1986, my brother and I lived with our mom, her new husband, and my stepbrother, out in the country. Where we lived, there was five things to do for fun, hunting, fishing, football, swimming, and riding ATVs. If you didn't like doing any of those, well, you were SOL. For my birthday that year, my dad had given me a little German Shepherd slash St. Bernard mixed puppy. I named her Fluffy, because she was a little ball of fluff. What do you want, I was 10 years old. Fast forward 6 months, and Fluffy was not quite so fluffy anymore, nor was she small. She was a fierce protector of my brother and I, and much beloved by us and our friends. 
Our next door neighbors had two boys, one my age and one a few years younger. They also had a giant four wheeler, one of those big ones that you use for hunting in the backwoods. Their younger son was a spoiled little asshole, could do no wrong in his mother's eyes, and the rest of us kids absolutely hated him. His brother regularly got in trouble for not letting him tag along with us when we were playing. His parents would also let him ride the four wheeler around the neighborhood, really, a couple of dirt roads that crossed each other. In any case, he was much too young to be riding around on his own. One fine day, we were all outside playing, and the little asshole was riding around on the ATV. He was crossing back and forth through the yard in between our houses, and after a few back and forth passes, he saw Fluffy, who was laying in the sun. He made a beeline for her with the ATV, narrowly missing running her over when she got up and dodged. Of course, all of us older kids started yelling at him. Of course, his mother, who was outside as well, yelled at us for yelling at her baby, spouting stuff like, he's just playing, he didn't mean any harm, he wasn't really going to run her over, etc. In the middle of the yelling match, he tried to run over her again. At this point, I had had beyond enough, so I took up my sword and advanced to do battle. Yes, I said sword. Don't get all upset, it was a plastic toy sword. At most it would have bruised him a little. I know, as I speak from experience. Anyway, he rode away, laughing at us, taunting that he was gonna get my stupid dog. Unfortunately for him, he was not watching where he was going. You ever see someone take a mailbox to the face? Well, if you haven't, my friends, I'm here to tell you that it was glorious. The mailbox, like most out in the country, was on a wooden post and stuck out in front. While riding the ATV, he was at the perfect height for the ATV to pass underneath the mailbox unimpeded. The ATV. Not him. He was at the perfect height to catch a face full of mailbox, having turned to look where he was going when his mom screamed at him to, well, look out where you're going. It, it also didn't help him that, in his effort to run away from us, he had that ATV running pretty much flat out. Ever watch while the coyote hit the tunnel while riding a rocket, and the rocket keeps on going through the tunnel while while the coyote stops in midair and falls? It was like that, but with more of a metallic to womp sound. Little asshole hits the mailbox, then hits the dirt. Of course, he starts crying like his very soul got knocked out of him. Of course, we are all dying laughing. Of course, his mother is beyond pissed. Add us. For laughing at her baby's misfortune. She was yelling at us, running over to her baby, while I yelled back at her that he got what he deserved for trying to run over my dog. She came over to the house later on, after my mom had gotten home from work, to complain to her. Having already heard the story from me, my brother, and my stepbrother, my mom told her off about her kid being a spoiled little sh asterisk t who got what he deserved for trying to run over my dog, and if he tried it again she was going to call CPS. To this day, whenever I'm having a bad day, the memory of him hitting that mailbox and landing flat on his back never fails to bring a smile to my face. It's not a small animal. This is my niece's story, but she said I could post it here. Approximately 15 years ago, she was living in Florida. She was separated from her husband, waiting for the divorce to be final. She had two young children and her STBX, Kevin, would come weekly to visit the children. This was code for eating her food, washing his clothes, sleeping on the couch, and yelling at the kids for bothering him. She kept humoring him and letting him do this because she was waiting for the papers to be finalized and did not want him to delay things by being an ass. They were set to sign the papers in less than two weeks, and he came to visit again. The kids were down for their naps and she was cleaning in the back of the house. She came back out to find that Kevin had eaten the food she had set out for them to have for dinner. He made a big mess in the kitchen and was now asleep on her couch. She was pissed but knew that confronting him directly would not accomplish anything other than possibly delay her divorce. 
So she took a deep breath and started to straighten up the kitchen, she was putting things back in the refrigerator when she saw a package of stew beef. She had forgotten about it and it had it was no longer safe to eat. She finished cleaning up and went outside to get some fresh air when she got a good look at Kevin's car. He had been in some sort of accident and the metal above the wheel well was torn open. That was the light bulb moment. She went inside and got the trash to throw it away. She went back outside and set the bag on the ground next to the trash can and took out the package of stew beef. Then she grabbed a pair of garden gloves and carefully put all the rotting meat inside the hole above the wheel well. Then she sat back and waited. Oh, I should probably mention that it was the end of July when she did this. When Kevin came back to visit the kids you could smell the rotting meat from 25 feet away from the car. While the kids were taking their naps, she sat and looked out the window while drinking a glass of wine. Her view was of Kevin in the driveway tearing his car apart trying to find the source of the smell. When he came back a few days later, she insisted that he park down the street from the house due to the smell. He told her that he did not know what it was and that he had to stop on the side of the road multiple times to throw up due to the smell. It took another week before he found the source of the smell. Kevin told her that a small animal must have crawled in there and died. To this day, he still has no idea that she did it. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.